Okay, in this video, I'm just going to set up the newly installed Ubuntu app in Windows. So to open the app for the first time, you can just go to your search bar or your taskbar, start button, whatever you call it, search for Ubuntu and click on it so your app opens. I've already opened it. Yeah, so as soon as you open it, maybe it takes a few minutes to install it, install certain features the first time you open it. And then when it's ready, you will be asked to enter a Unix username. So I'm going to enter my name as my Unix username. And look at the message there in, on the second line, that your username does not need to match your Windows username. So it does not need to be the same. The Linux subsystem in Windows works independently of your Windows system. If you screw up something here, if something goes wrong here, don't worry. I mean, you might lose some work that you do, but it will not affect your Windows machine. You can simply delete the app and reinstall it or whatever. So it works independently of your main Windows system. So I create my new Windows, uh, sorry, new Ubuntu username and a password. Select an easy password because Hopefully you're not doing any sensitive secure information stuff here. So something short and easy. So uh, I have now set uh, a password. So I have uh, my username that is Arun, A-R-U-N. And you can see uh, the prompt that appears that shows me my username, Arun, at NTNU 100068. So that's just the name of the computer. So whatever your computer is identified at uh, will be the name that will appear after the at sign there. You might have noticed as when I, after I typed my username and I got the command to enter new Unix password, nothing was visible. So this is, if you're new to uh, Ubuntu or Linux, this is a security feature. When you're typing the password, it does not dis display anything. You're probably used to typing something and your keystroke being recorded as an asterisk or some kind of symbol on the screen. But in Linux or Unix systems, uh, in, as an additional layer of security, it doesn't even show you the number of characters that have been entered. So don't worry if you cannot see anything when you type the password. You just need to type the same combination of letters two times, and then you are ready. So now you're ready, so you can, I can show you some very simple commands, L, S, that is list, it shows you a list of files. Of course, here you see nothing because of course, there's nothing there. You just created this uh, area. But one useful command is pwd, that is present working directory. And there you see slash home slash arun. So this shows you where you are right now. So I am in my home folder, and that is demonstrated by pwd. Another one, an uh, important one maybe, when you start is who am I? It shows you what user are you logged in as. And some of you who might have had problems, maybe you have, instead of your username, you have root at whatever your computer is named. So that can be a common problem. In another video, I'll show you how to solve that problem. And secondly, also, if you forget your password, there is a way to reset your password for the Ubuntu in Windows subsystem. I will show that as well in the other video where I'll deal with the common problems you can have. Uh, one of the main uh, features, one of the main functions that you need is to create a directory. So I say mkdir test1. So this makes a directory or a folder by the name test1. So now when I use ls list, there you go. The folder is displayed. It's called test1. ls list has another additional option called ls minus a. And ls minus a stands for all. And therefore, you can also see the hidden files. So there you have .bash rc and .profile, which we will deal with later at another stage. So this is your Windows subsystem installed and ready to go.